Okay, so this is uh, video class six, and this is the second video, and we are going to look at continuing on in chapter four. This is section uh, four two out of Sengel, and here's uh, some images from Sengel, and we're talking about flow patterns and flow visualization after having just introduced uh, the velocity field idea. So. Uh, we've probably seen lots of different uh, pictures of uh, things f floating and, and things streaming past them, the fluids moving past them. Uh, so, and one of the tools that we'll use, or we, we will use a little bit, but is used in modern day, is computational fluid dynamics. And a lot of times the output of that will, the things of interest, or the things that are most easy to display, will show the kind of flow patterns. Um, and the most common thing to use is something called a streamline. Um, but we also have other ways uh, to, to approach fluids. And, and one of the you know, historic ones is to take pictures and stuff of uh, flow fields. And so th these are things called streak lines. And it's a, uh, a, a laboratory tool to try to show the flow patterns. And sometimes the streamlines and the streak lines can be the same thing, but not necessarily. Right, so for steady flow, streak lines and streamlines are the same thing. But this is, you can see this baseball in reality is not a steady flow situation. Um, so do I want to go to this one? Yeah, okay, so this is actually in my notes uh, showing that. Um, so those lines that we just drew in the uh, previous, uh, in the previous video, Let's talk about these guys. We, we, whoops, get out of there. We drew these lines and described them as being uh, streamlines, right? So, but we can find them um, it's most easily to describe this in two dimensions by just taking the, uh, the slope, right? So dy, dx, and you can, let's take a look down here at this uh, figure right here. You could see that the slope of this is going to be the v. Uh, uh, this the the vertical component at a particular point divided by the run. So it's the rise over the run is going to be the dy dx, right? So the components equals the slope, and if you take that everywhere, you're going to be uh, the results when there's steady flow. That is, you're going to be able to f uh, draw equations for lines for these streamlines. So that's kind of where they come from. And then the streak lines are like it's sort of like real life brother. These are the these are the laboratory tool where we inject like a dye or something that where particles will float or something along those lines. Could be even the smoke, like little streams of smoke, uh, and they go past uh, a body that's either in motion or or within the flow that's going over the body. Either way, and those are streak lines, and you'll probably familiar with seeing maybe some of those in like commercials or whatever when they're looking at aerodynamics and things. Um, and then re reiterate that for a steady flow situation, the streak line is equal to the streamline. And then there's also, we'll, we'll talk about path lines, or there are people that talk about path lines. We're not really going to talk about them that much, to tell you the truth. Um, but this is like a Lagrangian concept. So over here is the Eulerian concept, but here's a Lagrangian concept. And I think of them as like railroad tracks. Um, th this is like if you're looking at a particle and you want to trace where the particle goes, that's going to be the path line. And honestly, when it's a steady flow, the path line equals the streamline. Which equals the streak line, right? So when 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 everything was predictable, right? So nothing changes with time. All three of these things are equal to each other. But the run we really care about is the streamline. Tell you the truth. And as I had alluded to towards the end of the last video, you might like have a velocity that's in two dimensions that's described by its uh, components u and v, and those components they might change with position. Right, so in the x position, we have an equation that we could quantify uh, or to, to or model to describe what a particle is doing in the x direction, uh, what its velocity is in x. So, like, we got one particular spot. So, well, what's its what's its com x component here, and then what's its x component here, and what's its x component here, and so forth. That would be what's describing u, and then the same thing with the y direction. And sometimes they're dependent. On the vert, uh, uh, you know, they're not just dependent on like 
the, the, the component in the u direction isn't always simply dependent on x. It could also be a function of y. It could be a function of z if we were going to do it three dimensions, but we're just going to stick with two dimensions. So just realize that we could have something that's a, a, that, that, that has, has a function of many other things right here, right? So um, as like for instance, I mean, I'm just reiterate, but I'm going to come back to this right here. You could see that these 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 components of velocity can change with e, x, y, and z, and with time. Right there, they're they're not tied to the x is dependent on x and y and the excuse me the horizontal component isn't necessarily uh, uh, only a function of its x position, just like the vertical component isn't necessarily only a function of its y position. So you have to kind of try to imagine those things changing. Now here is a uh, little another another figure with some streamlines, and you can kind of see this idea of streamline coordinates that we can zoom in, and these things kind of become this coordinate system and these streamlines. And then I'm also showing the perpendicular the lines that are perpendicular to them. Those are called velocity potential, which we won't be using, but are conceptually difficult to grasp sometimes. Um, so. But, but, but sometimes in order to actually, for this to actually be a useful thing, we need, to be a, we need to be localized to just a small portion of the flow to actually be able to look at them. Um, and, and some of these are theoretical because we, we, you know, in real life, this portion over here isn't going to be steady um, in, in reality, but we'll still call them streamlines and we'll try to look at them. Something that's very, very important to us that we should introduce right now and keep hammering home is the idea of the stagnation point. And that's going to be a point, there, there could be other stagnation points, but the one that we most concerned about is usually when a flow approaches a, 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 an object, there's going to be something where it has, that, that, that particle has to stop right there. It doesn't have any other choice. It has to go, it has to either go up or down, but it can't continue on the straight direction that it is. And therefore, it's going to be, that's called a stagnation point, And it's going to be a pretty important one to us. Um, so here on that same uh, uh, figure right here, I decided I had done this a while back, and this is using SolidWorks' uh, um, flow, uh, is computational flow dynamic uh, uh, stuff. And we'll, see, we'll use this, these same figures again later on, by the way, later in the semester uh, when we talk about drag. Um, but here's right here is a drag coefficient. And, you, and you'll see that the drag coefficient changes with something called Reynolds number, which we already kind of alluded to. And Reynolds number is really sort of a, a measure of the, the viscosity forces versus inertial forces. I, maybe I said that wrong. It was the inertial forces versus viscosity forces. But you could just think of them right now as being like large velocities make, make a large Reynolds number. And here is that velocity field that we would get at a very low Reynolds number. Uh, so this, like, they call it no separation right here. Um, and and that's, that's the quality where I have the solid line. And I have made the slides so that the scale changes proportionally to that Reynolds number as I get larger. And so this is a flow visualization that we want to use. So here is Reynolds number at 1. Here's Reynolds number at 10. And that's where we there. That's approximately this B, which they're showing here. So that was the flow field that we just saw. And we're going to pretend that this is a steady thing. But then we get a little bit higher there, and we start getting enough turbulence that we end up uh, something that's called um, this oscillating Karman vortex sheet. So, so we get this swirl things that are taking place. And of course, the uh, uh, CFD is pretending like it's steady flow. But in reality, these little swirly things are, are, are going to take place. And we, get, we see them even more at uh, Reynolds number of 1,000. And then we can keep going up. And we can kind of start to see these uh, different things that are taking place. And then right here is an interesting spot where you can see the drag coefficient dips down. A lot of times this is what um, people describe where dimples are involved. Uh, dimples try to encourage this to happen at a lower location where actually the drag suddenly drops off. The drag coefficient does at least. So you can actually, uh, uh, y y y the ball can go further because it has induced some helpful type of turbulence. Um, this is all called boundary layers. We're going to learn all about this later on. But this is the flow visualization portion of the thing. And I thought that this would be a helpful type of thing. So you can see that I brought it from uh, 
as it moves down, right? So I'll go backwards right here. We start this flow, increasing the flow. We can start to see how these arrows move around. And you can kind of see where that stagnation is right there, right? That stagnation right at the, right at the nose uh, where it's taking place. So I thought this would be a, a useful way to, to try to, to think it's on. But like in turn, this little area right here, that can't have steady flow inside there, even if it mathematically uh, the CFD is telling you that they are. Um, so here's uh, some more figures from uh, Sengel um, talking about path lines. And uh, one way they, they could try to do this, they, they, these little tracer things that are suspended in the water to try to uh, uh, put that Lagrangian concept. Um, streak lines, uh, some more pictures, try to get you more used to this idea. Um, they're identical in steady flow, like I said. I don't think I need to leave this slide up there long. Um, here's, here is some um, that are time dependent. You can see there's a, uh, this one has a function of time, right? So the V uh, direction has a function of time, and you can see that the, the, the streak li streamlines, path lines, and streak lines are not the same thing. And here's a, a, another Carmen vortex. So if something goes fast enough around here, these vortices can form on the trailing side of it. And we can actually find out what the, the, the natural frequency is that the, that type of thing creates. Um, and then plots of various flow data uh, are often shown in uh, this manner right here, where we, we might have a vector plots, which we just saw. Sometimes we'll do a contour. Uh, so there's like a block with a flow field going over it. Um, they might do contour line plot or a filled contour plot. These are all things that you would use in CFD to be able to uh, visualize stuff. So here's going to be an example. I'm going to make the video maybe a little longer than I want to, but I'll do, um, do it anyway. So here's an example. And what we're going to do is we're going to use um, a little bit of uh, MATLAB to try to make this um, you know, interactive, right? So we could try to do a problem and actually solve it. Um, to just to get our heads wrapped around the idea of the velocity field and uh, streamlines, if it will, will, will you please? There you go. All right. So focusing on the thing. So um, for whatever reason, somehow we're able to get a flow uh, in a particular location that can be modeled, where the velocity in the x direction is is known to be one plus whatever its vertical position is. So at any particular point, there somehow we were able to have a flow field that does that right there, right? So uh, if we know where the Y location is, we know what the X component is. And I'm sorry, this is not um, focusing, okay. And then also somehow we know that the velocity Y component is always equal to one. So that's a pretty simple thing. So if we go ahead and we take dy dx of this, We'll note that it's going to be equal to the vertical velocity component divided by the horizontal velocity component. So we could stick them back into each other. So if, if we uh, put this back in and we say, okay, that means that's going to be 1 divided by 1 plus y right there, right? We just, we just plug them into, into the thing. Um, and so, but separate this out right here and say, well, there's one times dx. So let's bring dx out to the top here. And then we'll say, well, okay, that's going to be one plus y dy. Well, we can integrate that. And now we can find x is going to be equal to y plus one half y. And then there's going to be some constant of integration right in there. And the idea of that constant of integration is, well, th these are these are a family of lines. Um, this is just an equation. It's not any one particular equation. We could say, well, let's say let's pick a point, right? So we want to plot a streamline on a graph. Um, so let's pick a point. Just pick a point. It could be any point, but and so the point we'll pick is the origin. Right. Let's make let's figure out what this thing is going to be at the origin. And therefore, at the origin, the uh, equation is X is equal to Y plus one half Y. Right. Because if you plugged in zero and zero, zero and here and zero and zero. Right. C would have to be zero. At that point, C is equal to zero. Right. So it's at that point, C is equal to zero. So let's plug in some numbers. And because this is y, this x is a function of y right now, it's probably going to be best for us to uh, first 
pick some some points that are going to be useful to us right here. So I think I might need to pause my video one second because I think I forgot something. Mm, yeah. Okay, continuing on here. So um, I'm not going to make the video too long. So because I have a, a y, x is a function of y for my streamline, I'm going to pick uh, increments um, on my grid right here. I decided to go from 3 to negative 3. So I'm going to go, um, I'll go up from negative 3 and downwards, just picking increments to try to uh, demonstrate this, right? So um, for my streamline, right? So if I'm going to plot a streamline right in here, um, we'll say that it's uh, 1.5 is what x is going to be equal to put negative 3 into there that should be squared i don't know why i didn't square that before whoops uh because i was talking that's why um if i put negative 2 in there it ends up being zero um if i put in negative 1 it ends up being negative 1 half and if i put in zero i get zero because i want i actually picked this on purpose so that this would pass through the origin that's what this was I picked a point. Maybe we could pick some other point and figure out what the streamline looks like that passes through there. And this one, uh, it's gonna be 1.5 if I put one in there. If I put two in there, it's gonna be four. And if I put three in there, it's 7.5. All right, so um, I can plot these out. This is gonna be the streamline. Um, and so it's gonna look like something like uh, at negative three, I get 1.5, which is like right here, because there's one, there's three, and there's five, and there's whatever, and there's seven, okay. Um, and the same thing's true right here. I'm gonna have uh, uh, at zero x, I'm gonna have negative two. At uh, negative one right here, I'm gonna have, um, I think, negative one half. At um, 1.5, is that right? No, what, did I, what was I supposed to do? Well, I'm gonna have a zero, right? If I say zero, I'm gonna have zero. Sure, I think I messed up right here. I think I need this needs to be at um, negative one. That's gonna be, oh yeah, right here, right? Yes, because it's, no, nope, right there, come on. All right, I think I messed up one more time, one more time. Uh, at negative one, right here, he's going to pass through right there. I did that right? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Um, and then moving on here, at a y equals one, this becomes one point five. Okay. At two, uh, let's see, right in here, that becomes four. And at three, this is like seven point five. Right. So we could kind of see. What that's going to look like where we're going to go plot like this try to do my best to sketch these out like that right there okay so that is a streamline uh for this velocity field well well that's all well and good well let's plot out and take a look at, at how that's true right here so we know in the uh y component everything is going to have a the same vertical position right so you can kind of look and see that everybody's got the same vertical position right there we just make a little a little sketch onto the thing everybody's kind of moving that way so you can think of it as a there's a, a front that's coming in right here but at the same time there's another one that's kind of like sliding in right um so we can see that uh, uh in the u direction we could plug that in up to this right here so we could plug in y uh, uh, is negative three. We know that's going to end up being negative two. This is going to be. Uh, we're going to plug in uh, uh, negative two for for. Uh, I, I need to come back up to there and to here. Put the negative two back into there. We get a negative one. We put this is going to be the zero. Uh, put a, uh, a zero back in here. We're going to get one, and we have two and three and four. Right. So you can just kind of see that this is a this is just a plot of or just a thing of putting that in there. Um, but you can kind of see how this is going to go, right? So this is going to have a velocity in the x direction that's negative two. So it's kind of coming up. You can kind of there, there, right there. There's the velocity, right? And there's the slope of what it's going to look like. And same thing true here. This is going to be kind of like 45 degrees because these are both going to be equal to each other, but coming over that way. You can kind of, so you can kind of see how these are are working up. Like this is just going to be straight up, 
right there. Of course, that means it's changing direction. This one also is going to be like a, a 45 uh, coming right in there and uh, and so on and so forth, right? So uh, we would have this uh, coming in here where, uh, uh, let's see, this is going to be like three. So we'd have it like that right there and then uh, and, and so forth. Now, in MATLAB, this would be very useful for us, and I think that's what the homework will be associated with this, is to, is to use this, and I've already kind of generated sort of the kind of idea for you, is just to create a grid of points, like, and this is just deciding, I decided to, to go from negative four uh, to eight, right? So that's uh, uh, from, let's see, oh no, I went from, no, excuse me, I went from, uh, oh yeah, negative four and eight, Oh yeah, so so I went horizontally. Yeah, I guess I guess I made the grid bigger than you can see it. Yeah, because I made the limits down here, but there's more points. So this the limits are negative two to eight. Uh, but I distributed this thing out with a 0.5. Um, and maybe I should need a 0.5. I mean, maybe I should have made the uh, uh, 0.25, 0.25, or maybe 0.5. Anyway, I, I created a, a a a grid of stuff um, of just uh, of values uh, and then. I set another one equal, you know, with these equal uh, to one plus the y, right? So that's the x component. Here's the y component, uh, and then I made the streamline that we care about, right? So I uh, uh, created just a, a set of numbers uh, that that were uh, should be equal in length to those others. Um, and then uh, was able to find a, a line. And then I was able to uh, um, create, use a quiver thing. And this quiver makes all of these uh, lines right here. And I, for all the different X and Y components, uh, I have oh, X and Y locations, I have the X and Y components of their velocities. And it plots that out. I set what the limits were that are going to be shown on here. And then I superimposed, because I did a hold on, I plotted on top of that the X and Y components of the uh, streamline, which you can now see on top of there. And monkeying around with this, I think will help uh, create sort of the, the feel of a visualization of uh, the velocity field and streamlines and where they come from. So we're gonna be done.